Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for Wednesday, the 23rd of May, 2018. Taking a look at the nice blue marble here as we start things off. Good deal of the Western Hemisphere, the tropical Atlantic out here, Caribbean Sea, Gulf of Mexico, the subtropics, and of course the Eastern Pacific. Nothing brewing in either of these locations that warrants too much concern. Of course, we will be watching Invest Area 90L over here, and nothing in the Pacific to worry about right now. In a tropical convergent zone, prevalent, but not percolating too much. African dust off the coast of Africa and an interesting low pressure area out in the open Atlantic but that part of the world really not worthy of too much attention this time of year that'll happen later down the road as we get probably towards August and we'll talk about that more on June 1st with the special broadcast that I will do that evening all right so nothing going on in the eastern Pacific and the Atlantic we do have before hurricane season officially begins, this one area, pesky as it may be, invest area 90L, and it is tucked away down here just off the coast of Belize. 60% chance of development over the next five days, but curiously, 0% or near 0%, they say, over the next 48 hours. If we click on it, we see what it looks like on the satellite map, and then you click on it again, and you get to zoom in, which is nice. So today, we can see a little bit more curvature to these random bands of showers and thunderstorms. Maybe a little bit of precip over Jamaica, where our good friend there, Andre, who I communicate with often on the WhatsApp app, tells me that it has been sultry, quite hot there. So maybe, Andre, we can bring you some precipitation, just as long as there's not too much of it, right? Cayman Islands, for now, scattered showers and thunderstorms every now and then. And then off the coast of Belize and the eastern part of the Yucatan Peninsula down towards Honduras and Nicaragua. Squally weather from time to time, but nothing too concentrated just yet. Now, I saw this tweet from our good friend Jim Williams at Hurricane City showing that uh, maybe 90L trying to get his act together. And he tweeted this GIF animation from the GO-16. And you can see just a little bit of broad turning right in here again just off the coast of the yucatan i mean it's there's no question about it that there's definitely some turning associated with this and we can see that very evident here on the 850 millibar vorticity chart from the university of wisconsin and there it is right there a little bit more prevalent today still kind of oblong in shape it's not exactly rounded in nature and if we go back to that animation here the satellite animation that shows up yeah, it makes sense. Still very loosely organized overall, but it is beginning to make some progress. Now, this is going to be a rather slow and drawn-out process. We're going to be talking about this, <clears throat> unfortunately, for several days. And uh, so that's the vorticity chart. This is the upper-level winds. Generally, those upper-level winds are all westerly. Nice trough carved out here over the open Atlantic. There's that low-pressure area I was talking about. So the upper level winds are not very favorable, which is typical for this time of year. We're supposed to have a lot of westerly wind flow. Now that might change a little bit over time so that the upper level pattern over the Gulf of Mexico especially might become a little bit more conducive for things to get going on a more organized basis with this system. Uh, water temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico everywhere except this part is warm enough to sustain tropical cyclones and keep them developed uh, for the most part. Typically 80, 82 degrees Fahrenheit, especially that 82 degrees Fahrenheit or 28 Celsius, once you get to about 82 Fahrenheit, uh, you really boil up the atmosphere efficiently. That seems to be the, the most magic number, although 80 is sort of the bottom threshold. 82 degrees, which is this area right here in the loop current, and then the shelf water off of the central Gulf Coast it's there, but the rest of the Gulf, at least the skin, the surface of the Gulf of Mexico, warm enough for development, and so we need to watch this. And remember, this has been pumping in a lot of deep moisture from the Caribbean Sea through the Yucatan Channel up through Florida, the southeast. Uh, you get these different waves of energy coming through. Sometimes they interact with frontal systems coming by to the north, and you get enhancements. And this is going to be a big, big problem 
over the next several days for a lot of reasons. If the system comes up here and organizes even just a little bit more, you're going to have this onshore flow coming around a good deal of the northern gulf, and that's going to build the seas. You're going to have some possibility of beach erosion, higher than normal tides, onshore flow. That's usually a big problem. And in the, in the typical low-lying areas, you think about Waveland, Mississippi, you know, the battleship area around Mobile, Alabama, that causeway there, US-90, uh, and other places where the lower-lying roads could flood at high tide. Persistent onshore flow could exacerbate that. So something to think about, especially if you're a boater, you have mariner interests for the weekend going out into the Gulf. You might want to reconsider that and, and certainly pay attention to the weather. Don't just think that, oh, it's not going to be a hurricane. I don't have to worry about it. Uh, nothing could be further from the truth. You need to take this seriously. Now, this is an interesting satellite simulation, the infrared simulation from uh, the weather.us model group. Uh, and I saw this on a forum, so I figured I'd show you. This is kind of what the European model from last night's run indicates a simulated infrared satellite picture may look like. So as you can see, it looks like a big comma or whatever, right? It's not very well organized. That does not look like a hurricane or a tropical storm. Uh, and that's very typical for this time of year. Low pressure would be down here probably. And a lot of the heavier precip, in fact all of it, on the north and east side of this system. And this just gives you an idea of what it may look like. Uh, amazing the technology that we have today to kind of visualize what a particular system may resemble down the road. And if this comes to pass, uh, a large area of rain, again, maybe some onshore flow across this region, you know, maybe from Tampa, Cedar Key, all the way over to perhaps New Orleans. But what we're going to have to wait and see is, you know, as this comes north and meanders around, it may come ashore and then just kind of drift around here and hang out over the southeast, meaning that a large area through here could have a tremendous amount of rainfall, you know, for one, and all these other nasty weather features as well, maybe some severe weather. And this is highlighted also by Taylor Trogdon. Uh, who is he? Well, he works down at the National Hurricane Center, a senior scientist for the surge unit down there, he used to be with the National Weather Service in Memphis. So again, he knows what he's talking about, and he's tweeting this image from the Weather Prediction Center showing the rainfall potential. I put this on my blog today. Very, very large area aerial extent of heavy rain is giant. Now, not everybody is going to see these exact rainfall totals. Remember Harvey, it's a good guidance, I guess, you know, to see what may happen down the road. This is a seven day, I think, something like that. Is that what that says, or is it two day? Let me zoom in. <laughs> my eye. Come on. Let me get my arrow. I want to make sure I'm accurate. Yeah, that's what I thought it said, seven day. Uh, sometimes the lettering on here gets kind of blocky. Whoops, I went too far. Let's go back. All right, so the next few days, very, very heavy rainfall. Cannot state this enough, okay? That has to be a consideration for people traveling, heading to the beach. I know it stinks to be talking about this. It's not good news, but we got to stay safe out there. You're traveling uh, interstates or not, it doesn't matter. You think about getting out of central Alabama, northern Alabama, down to the Gulf Coast, and uh, what is that, 59 that comes out of there towards Gulf Shores, 49? No, I think it's 49. It's 59 in Mississippi. Uh, you know, I-85, I I-20, I et cetera, you know, I-10 corridor, I-95, whatever. You need to be very careful. These heavy showers and thunderstorms, you're towing a boat or you're driving the big SUV, the family in it, and you're going 70 miles an hour with torrential rain. Ugh. Okay, honest to goodness, this is not good news. Please be careful out there and insist that your friends and family be careful as well. You might sound like a nerd. I don't care. I'd rather have living nerds than dead nerds, right? And that's not, you know, it sounds morbid, but this is a big weekend. A lot of people are going to be traveling, for goodness sake. So we have to not look at rain as being, oh, if it's going to rain, it's not a big deal. It is definitely a big deal. And on top of that, maybe some coastal impacts as well. Now looking at the GFS, uh, the operational, and again this is the deterministic operational run. We could go through all of the ensembles, what every model is saying, but we could be here for an hour and a half doing that. 
and we're going to get no closer to resolving what's actually going to happen. So just to give you an idea, this is the loop from today, the 12Z run, and this is over the next 48, uh, to, I'm sorry, the next five days, so 120 hours. There's the vorticity down here, and this is every hour to start out, and I think it skips to every three hours once we get to day five and beyond, but we're going to stop at day five. And you see what happens, we're at about the day three mark, and I will try to stop it. You see the vorticity tries to concentrate and move up into the Big Bend area north of Tampa. I just I think this is feeding back and the, the, a good deal of the rest of the modeling is more west somewhere over here if you want to call it a landfall. Uh, but focusing on the center is really not the point here. The overall idea of a lot of moisture and energy which is what these different colors represent, the vorticity in the atmosphere see a big blob there, a little satellite low pressure area or energy over eastern North Carolina towards the end. And we can actually speed this up. You'll see how that evolves over time, consolidates slightly at first, and then it just kind of jumps to the northeast, which I just don't buy. But then look here right at the end of the run, and we'll go back to that. In North Carolina, you get this one little piece up here over the interior. You know, that could dump a lot of heavy rain if that were to verify. I look at this and I see, oh man, look at all that energy uh, in the atmosphere and then the low pressure itself stuck over here and the whole pattern just kind of stays mired like this for about the next week. I know, right? It's like, oh, come on. And there is even indication that it could stay like this for longer as this overall pattern of this tap down into the Caribbean uh, all the way to the intertropical convergence zone may stay stuck as we get into June, maybe the next 10 days. So we're going to have to really watch this because flooding, major, major deal here, possibly, over the southeast, pinpointing exactly who sees this heavy rain. That's going to be impossible. So it's going to be very important for you. you got to take responsibility now. People like me kind of raising the alarm that this could be happening. All right, now you have to take it upon yourself to stay informed, Check the radar. Check your local National Weather Service. You know what? Just go to weather.gov, weather.gov. Put in your zip code or the zip code of where you're wanting to travel to. Read the forecast discussions. Read what they say. Don't worry about what social media is saying when you see graphics showing the potential for strong whatever. Okay, Try to avoid sort of the flashy, shiny stuff and look at the more sort of dull, mundane, yet very informative stuff, these forecast discussions uh, that come out from the Weather Service. They're technical, but they're going to give you the accurate information for the local area <clears throat> that you are interested in. And the same holds true for paying attention to the local meteorologist in the area that you're traveling to or that you're interested in or are already in. Follow, follow those people on social media, on Twitter, elsewhere, and stay up to date. You know, One more sort of soapbox thing here getting away from the idea if it's not a hurricane it's not exciting is total BS and if we're going to ever have any kind of culture of preparedness and sense of responsibility of taking care of ourselves we have to be educated that, that the weather sometimes does turn against us most days it's very nice especially in long beach communities but once in a while it turns nasty and even these sort of mixed hybrid um, mutt kind of dogs if you will low pressure areas can wreak havoc okay so just because it's not a hurricane or a tropical storm that looks like a tropical storm on satellite picture dismissing it as you know it doesn't look like one so I'm not going to worry about it that's foolish okay you would never ever look at a snake and just say well you know I don't know what kind of snake it is so I'm just going to pick it up uh, you always be careful with dangerous animals and the same holds true with weather you just have to be mindful and informed and stay safe. That's all I'm asking. All right, so that's uh, pretty much what I know for today. We'll be waiting on the slow progression of the system over the next few days. I'll stay on top of it, occasionally tweeting from time to time. And, you know, the blog post in the morning with a video post in the afternoon. And then discussions here and there on social media in between. And before you know it, Memorial Day weekend will be here. And we'll see how it all shakes out. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. I appreciate your time and attention. I am Mark Suddeth for HurricaneTrack.com, my website. If you haven't visited before, that's what it is, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.